45,000 tons of steel, technology, weapons and aviation. 262 meters of strategy, ambitions, problems and aspirations. The ship is not a world leader, it is not the largest and the most powerful, not even the first in the Indian Navy. But it is still special, becoming the first truly Indian aircraft carrier. Today on the horizon is INS Vikrant. The history of the Indian carrier fleet dates back to the early 1950s, when the naval air arm was formed. At the beginning, everything was modest, there were no aircraft carriers yet, and aviation was represented by rather outdated equipment. The situation changed in 1961, when INS Vikrant entered the fleet, the first Indian aircraft carrier, which however was not originally from here. The former British aircraft carrier HMS Hercules raised the Indian flag. It went through a long and turbulent career, took part in several military operations and retired only in 1997, becoming a museum. Not bad for a ship born during World War II. The second Indian aircraft carrier in 1987 became INS Virat, which like its predecessor was once a subject of Her Majesty, HMS Hermes aircraft carrier. It was already a more modern ship, with more modern weapons and an air wing made up of the Sea Harrier verticals. It served for almost 30 years and was decommissioned in 2016. Virat was replaced by another ship, INS Vikramaditya, which was not British. In the 1990s, after the collapse of the USSR, the new Russia was experiencing economic difficulties and was willing to cooperate in the military sphere with many countries, one of the main of which was India. Along with gigantic purchases of all kinds of military equipment, from tanks to aircraft, there were also ships, and Moscow offered Delhi one of the decommissioned Soviet aircraft carrying cruisers, Admiral Garshkov. Negotiations, purchase and modification took a very long time, but by 2014 Vikramaditya joined the Indian Navy, becoming its flagship. It should be noted that by that time in India for many years there had already been discussions that the technological and industrial potential of the country should be enough to reduce imports and start building a fleet of their own, including aircraft carriers. Vikramaditya was a compromise and gave them extra time, but after that they had to make the ships themselves. The Indian Navy's own aircraft carrier project was a huge step forward, and as it should be for a huge step, it took a very long time. The project with the initial index ADS-71 was initiated back in the late 1990s and later received the name INS Vikrant in honor of the very first aircraft carrier. The project was implemented by the Cochin Shipyard Limited, located in the port of Kochi in the state of Kerala, in the southwest of the country. CSL has long been a big company, both repairing and building ships, including large tankers, but Vikrant was a challenge for them. In 2001, they, together with the Warship Design Bureau, presented their vision, a medium-sized aircraft carrier with a displacement of about 32,000 tons, equipped with a springboard, stow bar design, and capable of operating a wide range of equipment, including carrier-based fighters without stovel functions. Its structure was clearly inspired by the design of Vikramaditya. Over the years, many changes were made to the design. The ship became larger and heavier, but in 2003 the project was finally accepted and received an official green light. Although INS Vikrant is not a record holder in terms of performance, it can be considered a full-fledged aircraft carrier with all the required attributes. It is 262 meters long, 62 meters wide and has a total displacement of 45,000 tons, the average for an aircraft carrier, on par with ships such as the French Charles de Gaulle or the American large amphibious assault ships like America or Wasp. The crew should consist of about 1700 people, including the staff of the air wing. In general appearance it resembles Vikramaditya. The deck of the ship is equipped with a large springboard in the bow, allowing classic carrier-based fighters to take off without the use of catapults. Landing is carried out according to the usual scheme, using arresting gears. But external similarities with Vikramaditya are deceptive. 
the ships are quite different. For example, at Vikrant, the design of the lifts has been completely revised. Two elevators are located not inside the deck area, but along the edges, as is done on most modern aircraft carriers and is considered more optimal. The island can be considered to be another big difference. Admiral Garshkov, which later became Vikramaditya, was created back in the USSR with the technologies of that time and the concept of an aircraft carrying cruiser with a corresponding design. Vikrant is a much more modern ship and was created precisely as an aircraft carrier, so its island is much more compact and pressed to the starboard side, which made it possible to allocate more space for the flight deck. Vikrant's power plant is represented by four General Electric LM2500 gas turbines, generating up to 120,000 horsepower. Along with a pair of large propellers, this is enough to accelerate the ship to 30 knots. The autonomous range reaches 8,000 miles. The ship is equipped with its own weaponry and means of self-defense. This complex includes four 76mm Autobrider cannons, four AK-630 close-in weapon systems, as well as 32 vertical launchers of Barak-8 anti-aircraft missiles. International Italian gun, Russian anti-aircraft cannon, and Israeli missiles, though produced mainly under license in India. Finally, the main tool of an aircraft carrier, aviation. First of all, of course, it's the planes, about 25 carrier-based jets. So far, it has not been possible to supply domestic equipment here. There were ideas for creating a ship version of the Tejas fighter, but it turned out that it was not suitable for sailors, and for them, a new aircraft is being developed. So at least for the near future, foreign vehicles will claim their place on the Vikrant deck. The MiG-29K, Rafale M, and F-A-18EF all already have extensive experience working at sea. Plus, of course, a dozen helicopters, among which should be the K-31, MH-60, and HAL Dhruv. Vikrant has become a mega-project for India, and it's not even about its cost that reaches $2.9 billion, which, to be honest, is not that much compared to the cost of some counterparts. Not only major military contractors, but also many other companies, including private ones, participated in its creation. Moreover, the scale of work concerned not only the ship itself, but also the entire infrastructure required for its creation. From the development of technical competences and knowledge, to the construction of entire factories for the production of components at all levels. Metallurgy, electronics, communications, weapons, and so on. Why, at the time of the initiation of the program, the shipyard itself was simply not able to accommodate a ship of this size. It also had to be rebuilt. Actually, the scale of modernization of everything around the project has become one of the main problems. Initial plans assumed that Vikrant would be handed over to the fleet by 2014, but despite all the efforts, it was impossible to meet this deadline, and the schedule shifted all the time. The design of the aircraft carrier assumes a modern, modular assembly scheme. The entire ship consists of 874 large blocks manufactured at factories and assembled on site like a puzzle. In 2009, all paths converged at the Cochin shipyard when the keel of the aircraft carrier was laid. By 2011, the ship's hull was assembled and launched, but there was still a lot of work. The most difficult part is the filling. The situation with the equipment wasn't simple. A significant part of the complex elements and systems for the aircraft carrier had to be made in India, but the problem was that many of them were made here for the first time. This again affected the timing, and the key phases of the project continued to move to later dates. As a result, Vikrant was announced fully ready only at the beginning of 2020. Physical readiness did not mean readiness for service. The sea trials began first in the coastal zone and then in the high seas. Finally, in September 2022, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held the official delivery ceremony for the aircraft carrier INS Vikrant to the Indian Navy. Now, training on the ship should be carried out by the military crew and pilots of the ship's air wing, after which, by mid-2023, it will be possible to assume that Vikrant has entered full-fledged service in the Navy. 
The Indian Navy's strategy is to have three aircraft carriers at the head of three fleet groups, one each for the east and west coasts and one more in reserve. This should be enough to control the Indian Ocean and its trade routes as well as show the flag and force, in case someone suddenly decides to misbehave here. This task is very ambitious and great effort has been put into solving it. In 2022, about 50 warships of various types were being built at different shipyards of the country. And among them, soon, the third aircraft carrier may appear. INS Vishal already will not be the first Indian aircraft carrier, but thanks to Vikrant's development, it should become a much more powerful ship, large and heavy, with a displacement of more than 65,000 tons, a flat deck and electromagnetic catapults, and an air wing numbering 55 planes and helicopters. In theory, Vishal will have to become the third aircraft carrier in the Indian fleet, and over time replace Vikramaditya. It is still difficult to say when this will be done. The ambitions are there, the plans are epic, but how many years it will take is still unclear. Vikrant took 20 years, Vishal should take less. After all, shipbuilders have learned a lot. That's enough for today. Comment what you think about Vikrant and the Indian Navy in general. And we will keep our eyes on the horizon, especially since India is not the only country in the region that has started building its own aircraft carriers. Very interesting.